Okay, so we're going to look at 10.3 composite functions, and I'm going to apologize right now if I cough during this lesson. No, that's okay. All right, yeah. so I'm sorry. Uh, now, this is 10.3. I'm going to break it up into two parts, and this is R1. So first we're going to look at these two functions. So we've got f of x and g of x. f of x is x squared plus 1, and g of x is 2x minus 3. So we've got f of g of 2. What it's saying is evaluate the composite function f of g of 2. So why don't we first figure out what uh, g of 2 is. So what is g of 2? Hmm. Okay. So write down what the function is and substitute a 2 in for where you see an x. So I've got 4 minus 3, so g of 2 is equal to 1. Awesome? But we're not done now. We're not done, no. We are not done. So now we need to figure out what f of g of 2 is. Now since f of g of 2 is, sorry, since g of 2 is 1, I can replace this g of 2 part by a 1. And then I can figure out what x squared plus 1, replace this x by a 1. 1 squared, so it equals 2. <coughs> so I'll just write that out over here. Well, it's just easier to find. Okay, so that's why I just wrote it out there. Or you can just circle that. Okay, now here we're asked to find an equation for g of g of x. So first, let's see what g of x actually is. Well, g of x is 2x minus 3. Now, if I were to figure out what g of g of x is, then in place of this x here, I would be writing g of x in there, okay? And now I can replace what this g of x, I can replace it as 2x minus 3. So I get 2 times 2x minus 3, make sure you have your brackets, and then minus 3. So we're going to multiply this through 4x minus 3. 6, and then minus 3, and we end up with 4x minus 9. So that's what g of g of x is. <coughs> All right. Now, here, what you can think of this as, think of this as g of, it's just a different notation to write g of f of x. All right? So g of f of x, so let's first write down what f of x is inside of this here. So what is f of x? x squared plus 1. <coughs> And then now, what is our function g? Our function g is 2x minus 3, right? But instead of the x, I'm going to write x squared plus 1 and then minus the 3. All right, so I've got 2x squared plus 2 minus 3, and that simplifies to 2x squared minus 1. Right, good job. So, g of f of x. Nice? Good? Sweet. Okay. And then the last one on this page is, we can write this out as g of f of minus 1. Okay. Um, what do you notice about this? 
there's no x. Instead of an x, we have a value of negative 1. But what else do you notice about this question? Look above to part C. It's the same, right? But instead, now I have a value that I can evaluate it for. Uh, so you have two choices. If you've noticed that you've already figured out what the composite function is, you can simply take this negative 1 and plug it into here. What do we think the answer is going to come out to? It's going to come out to 1, right? Because we're going to plug this negative 1 into here. So using from part C, uh, we can have, we've got g of f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 1. g of f of negative 1 is equal to 2, and then in the bracket, put the negative, square it, and that evaluates to <coughs> 2 minus 1, which is 1. All right, perfect. Moving on. Okay, so let's use this table of values. So it says use the table of value, use the table below to respond to the following questions. So we have to figure out what f of g of 2 is based on this table of values. So what do I need to figure out first? What's g of 2? g of 2 is 3. So what do I need to figure out now? f of 3. What's f of 3? So f of 3 is 4. So then my answer is 4. Okay, for b, what do I need to figure out first? f of 0. So this is f, and this is the, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. f of 0 is not part of the domain. So what now? So f of 0 is undefined. So if f of 0 is undefined, then g of f of 0 is also undefined. Right? Because we can't find the x value of 0 in our table anywhere. <coughs> okay. That was exciting, hey? It was like, it took a turn. It was like, we thought we were going to find it, and then it just, it wasn't there. Okay, like Atlantis. So here, g of f of x, so g of f of 3. So let's figure out f of 3 first. So f of 3 is 4. So then I'm looking for g of 4. So what's g of 4? g of 4 is <coughs> 1. Whoa, you guys can't see any of that. That wasn't good. Okay. So now, this is going to be f of f of 1. So what's f of 1? f of 1 is, f of 1 is 3. So that's 3. So now what's f of 3? So f of 3, that's 4. That was fun, hey? I think that's fun. All right. Cool. Next one. Given f of x is 2x minus 3, and g of x is x plus 3 over 2, determine f of g of x and g of f of x. So let's have a look at this one first. f of g of x. 
So then I've, I can write f of x plus 3 over 2, yep. And then 2, and then instead of the x, I'm going to put in this x plus 3 over 2. And then subtract 3 from there. What do you notice here? Those reduce. And then I've got x plus 3 minus 3. So what is f of g of x equal to? x. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to figure out g of f of x. So what is f of x? So let's say f of x here is 2x minus 3. And then what's g of x? In place of this x, I'm going to write 2x minus 3. And make sure you have it in brackets there over 2. Make sure you can see what I'm actually writing. So 2x minus 3 plus 3 over 2. So I've got 2x, and this is 0, 2x over 2. This reduces, and then what do I get? x. So I'm just going to write this on the side here because it looks a little squishy there. g of f of x equals x over here. And OK. So they actually happen to both equal x. So when f of x, sorry, when f of g of x equals x, or when g of f of x equals x, this means that f of, f of x and g of x are inverses of, of each other. Okay. So this would be a good way to show or prove. So this is how you would show or prove that two functions uh, are inverses of each other. OK. So you just basically have to do exactly what we did, show that it turns out to be like that, and g of equal x. OK? All right. So that's the end of that for now, and we'll continue with example four on the next video. All right? Stay tuned for more exciting math. <laughs>